So when it comes to crown molding, uh, this is what people traditionally think is a crown molding profile. Um, it rests against the wall and against the ceiling. Typically it's at a 52 degree projection angle, they call it. Um, and this has become synonymous with crown. But in reality, any, any profile that you use at the top of the wall against the ceiling would be distinguished as a, as a crown molding. In this case, it's a, a craftsman crown. We have a build out, we have a flat on the wall we have a flat on the uh, ceiling and then it's just got a couple of detail profiles in there. And then we can do a combination profile like this one where we would have a flat and a flat and then we use uh, a traditional crown in the, uh, as a filler. And you can see here how the construction is, is made. But specifically around this profile, that's where I get the most questions and is probably the most difficult piece of trim to install um, because of those projection angles. So there's a couple of techniques we're going to show you, and we're going to go over what I'll call a couple of uh, a couple of uh, methods of installation. And and first and foremost would be the what I'll call the conventional, where you just cut a 45 uh, degree angle and a 45 degree angle, and they made up. And, and creates a nice joint. Now, unfortunately on this jig, it's a perfect 90 degrees, and that doesn't happen in, in reality. You'll typically get uh, you know, a wider, more narrow angle. And so in the techniques, I'll give you, um, again, this is called the conventional. If you were gonna do it from a more scientific, more engineering perspective, there's a lot of devices that, that exist to help. Um, and actually, I have a book that is dedicated to crown molding. So you can, you can go as, uh, as complicated as you, as you choose, but the way this device works is it's, it's really just a, a big protractor to, to, to determine the angle of the wall. So you'd want to use it, and it's so wide because typically with, with sheetrock, it'll fill in here and, and you know, it, it'll throw the angles off tremendously around the inside corner or the outside corner. So you want to be able to capture you know these these outer points but we'll just we'll throw the device in lock it down and then we come down and determine the angle like i said this is 90 it's not typical but if we get a 92 or 88 degree angle then this book and we also have it available on our website this book has a mitering chart which basically says if you have an 88 degree angle um or we'll say a 92 degree angle, then you would set your chop saw at 44 degrees. Uh, and it, it's, it's listed, you know, in half a degree increments. So, so that, that's pretty technical and obviously requires, you know, the, the purchasing of the, of, the, of the large device. And then the third, the third method, which is, uh, I guess my method of, of preference would be to cope. Um, and coping on the surface looks very, very uh, intimidating, but it's really, it's really simple. And, and to determine really what all coping is, is we're cutting the shape of this profile into the mating part. And it allows us to, to install the, uh, the first piece of trim flush to the wall, and then the mating piece will die into it. And so what that does is allows us to, to work with basically any angle on the wall. So if we have an 88 degree or a 92 degree, it's never represented in the joint. The joint is always crisp and true. And so to, to achieve that cut, it's, it's really very simple. You'll take it to the, to the miter saw using the jigger fixture we have. You'll do an inside cut. With that inside cut, you'll then take a, a pen or a pencil and just mark the, in this case, the open cell structure area. And with that, that gives you the line that you need to cut. So this is the coping saw that we used to cut along the line and create this coped piece. But the, the thing about this technique is because you do have a true butt joint in the build, um, if you have a, we'll say if you have a a room that looks like this, 
you would have a butt joint here and then a coped joint here. So in this room, you're only going to have to create one, two, three, four, five cope joints. It's not like with the miters where you have to have two joints per. Um, and then, of course, the outside corner wouldn't require one. But the other thing about installing um, the crown mold is that projection, projection angle. So inevitably, if you try to install it just working off the two feet that we give you that rest against the wall and the ceiling, as you, as you work along, you're either going to push it up on the ceiling or you're going to let it fall down on the wall. And so what happens in that scenario is when you get to the area where you're trying to put it together, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. And it's extremely frustrating. And really the only way to correct it is to remove that piece and readjust it. So there's two techniques you can use to overcome that. One is you can you can place this on a on a table and determine you know the size of this opening and you can create little filler blocks and you can put these little triangle triangle filler blocks over each um, stud or, or framing member but it, it it's quite difficult because of that 52 degree projection angle on the 45 degree crown a little simpler but we've got a a, a little device here we'll show you how to make this um, that, that is real simple to use. All we're doing basically is we're measuring down from the ceiling and out from the wall and when we go to install the crown I usually make a couple of these if you've got more than one person installing. It holds it at the proper angle and you can you know secure it here, here, slide it down, secure it there and then what that ensures is when that mating piece goes in everything's going to be at the same at the same level.